Welcome everybody, thanks for coming. Um, we are gonna get kicked off in just a couple minutes. I'll let folks keep trickling in. And in the meantime, it is just wonderful to see your comments in the chat about your connection to adoption community. And then those of you who I know from the Adopty Lounge or adoption mentorship, please put in the lounge, like, or put in the chat, you know, what it has meant to you and why you are in support of this new nonprofit. So we'll get started in a couple. Also, as a reminder, we are in webinar format, so we can't see any of your faces. You can see myself and you can see Mary, who you'll meet in a moment, but feel free to be in your pajamas and running around the house because we won't be able to see you. Right, I think we should go ahead. I wanna keep this short, you know, maybe an hour or less. This will just be a great time together, but I don't want it to extend too far into people's evenings, especially I know there's folks on the East Coast. So I think we're good to get going, Mary. All right, well, please keep it happening and conversation happening in the chat. Um, but I, I just put this in the chat. I am so happy to be here in this space with all of you. Um, it is just been this incredible thrill of mine uh, to be able to be the board chair for this new nonprofit, the Adoptee Mentoring Society. And uh, we are excited to bring this to you and bring this out to the world and, uh, and share more about this with you today. So the mission of the Adoptee Mentoring Society is um, powerful and personal, I think, for um, all of us. And it is um, it's to create a space to validate, affirm, and center ad adoptees through compassionate virtual mentorship from those with lived adoptee experience. Um, in my mind, this means it's about creating a space and a community uh, and, and you are now part of that just by being here. And that is so exciting. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. Um, this evening, we're excited to share with you the vision and the goals uh, for this new and necessary nonprofit. And after the event, we're going to ask for your feedback on our website, which we'll reveal later. And um, get some feedback on the event and the messaging. And of course, if you have ideas on how we can grow to serve the millions of adoptees across the world. Um, it is appropriate uh, that we are launching this event and this uh, nonprofit in May because May is the National Mental Health Awareness Month. And so much a part of creating this space is to bring adoptees of all ages together to really combat some of the alarming statistics um, that exist in our world. Um, and, and I'm gonna just go through a couple of them with you. Um, and a study published by the journal Pediatrics in 2013 found that adoptees were about four times more likely to attempt suicide than their non-adoptee peers. 
Additionally, prevalence of substance abuse was 43% higher among adoptees than non-adoptees, according to a 2012 study published in the journal Plus One. And it is through all of this that we want to create the space through the Adoptee Mentoring Society for adoptees of all ages to come together to learn, to validate, listen, and support each other. And I can't do this alone. <laughs> so I am so thrilled uh, to introduce you to um, our founding board of directors. Um, we are made up of individuals across the country who come from various professional backgrounds, but all of us come to this board having had adoption impact our lives in some personal and significant way. It is my absolute honor to serve on this board with Alicia, Spring, Brian, Rebecca, Carrie, and Emily as we launch this work. And it is definitely not possible without this incredible group of people. So I'm going to ask board members, if you're present, go ahead and put in the chat why you're a part of this board. Um, but you all are not here to learn about us. And so uh, it sounds like so many of you already know her, but for those that don't, um, it is my tremendous honor to introduce you to the Adoptee Mentoring Society Executive Director, Angela Tucker. I met Angela years ago when as an adult, I was starting to kind of uncover the complex emotions that I was feeling around adoption. I, like so many of us, I love my adopted family. In fact, I think my dad is here. Hi, dad. Um, but I was also feeling the effects of being disconnected to my culture, my heritage, my, my roots, who I was. Um, and Angela helped me kind of really understand that these feelings, this, this love and gratitude for my life and, and the sadness of, and trauma from adoption are not only normal, but that they can coexist together. Um, Angela is a transracial adoptee and the subject of the documentary Closure. She is the host of the podcast, The Adoptee Next Door, and the host of a three-part web series, The Adopted Life, where she interviews transracially adopted youth. Angela has served as an adoption sensitivity consultant for NBC's This Is Us and the Broadway musical Jagged Little Pill, and serves as an advisor to child welfare agencies in South Africa, Canada, and Europe. Angela also serves on the Ethics Committee for the Adoption Files Initiative, the Steering Committee for the Society of Adoptee Professionals of Color in Adoption. Her inclusive family support model was published in the Journal of, Ch of Child and Family. And of course, as if this isn't all enough, her first book is scheduled for publication in the spring of 2023 through Beacon Press. Um, please, please join me in a virtual celebration um, to welcome and thank uh, Angela, the new executive director of the Adoptee Mentoring Society. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's fun to see so many names that I recognize and um, new folks who I don't yet know, but Thanks everyone for being here. So the great vision that I have is huge. I really envision the Adopting Mentoring Society to connect with all 7 million adoptees. That is global. <laughs> that can't happen tomorrow. I really wish it could, but we'll start with this nation because in part because the attorneys say so. <laughs> they only can help me uh, build the org for the United States. They can only, only counsel here, but I've already heard from some of folks around the world who want to be part of this. So it's really, it's really my vision. Um, many times when we think about adoption, we think about kids, children, adopted youth. The Adoptee Mentoring Society exists to serve all adoptees. So this is adoptees in their 60s, 70s, um, those who are adopted from foster care, those adopted internationally, people adopted by their kin, which is, um, you know, kinship care, maybe adopted by their aunt. And I'm thinking about one woman who I've mentored recently who her biological mother is her 
biological aunt. Uh, or her biological mother is her aunt and her biological aunt is her mother. And she, so it's kinship, it's a little complex. It's, this is partly why I'm so excited to build this org, but I'm gonna talk more about the why in a little bit. First, I would love to introduce you to Harper um, and his mother who are gonna share through a little video that they recorded earlier this week why this mentoring has been important to them. And then um, I'll come back and talk about why our world needs this. Hi, my name is Harper and I'm 14. I think mentoring because it helps me understand my feelings and get to know them better. My mom always uses an analogy that there's an inner well that when we have emotions, face challenges, or have difficulties in our life, that the well fills up with imaginary water. Um, when with mentoring, that's kind of a way to draw the water out, and it helps with leaving you and helping you feel like you're not alone, and especially when you're dealing with someone that you can trust, that you feel understands you, and that's kind of a you can just feel like solid ground and have a good relationship with that person. Mentoring for me has helped me in the past. When I had recently found my birth mom and Angela would help me like come up with questions, um, write, write down scenarios. And there was even some like preparing for what's ahead to come and help and it would help me a lot and so whenever I get on a call I feel confident and proud at the end that I actually done something without I don't know kind of just feeling like it wasn't good or it just helped me feel empowered and in control of what happened and I think mentoring can help other kids by helping them feel how I felt, which is like that they're not alone and that there's others out there that can understand them. And it's their job to kind of have fun, keep it loose, and not have be kind of serious and kind of depressing like counseling. <laughs> and so I hope that others around are anything. <laughs> that is Harper. Um, so proud of him for a lot of reasons. One thing that's so important to me is ethical story sharing. So when adoptees share their stories that they know they're not expected to tell strangers intimate details of their lives, but they can still communicate the impact. And I think Harper did a really great job of that. Another one of the values that I hold is that we compensate adoptees when they give us beautiful work like this. And so Harper and the other speakers tonight are compensated. And I just, I, I add that because I will talk about the values of Adoptive Mentoring Society a little later. And that one is kind of first and foremost that I want all of you to know that exploitation of adoptees can happen really easily and it, it will not happen here. Here is Harper's mom sharing the value to her. Hi, my name is Lara. I am Harper's mom. Harper is one of the youth in the Adoptee Mentorship Program. And we have found that to be incredibly valuable for Harper to have a place where he can develop some autonomy and agency over how he feels about his adoption experience, about his racial identity, how he wants to process that, how he wants to communicate that. Um, it's just really developed a lot of that confidence in him and this sense of like independence. And I think that's been really powerful. Um, so much so that it's actually inspired him to get involved in uh, mentoring other young boys who are black transracial adoptees. Um, 
it's different than therapy. Um, while therapy is great and helpful, it really focuses on like what happened to you. It focuses a lot on the past. Um, whereas I think a documentorship kind of is more like hopeful in that it goes from what happened to you and it brings the child through some of that to a place of like, but what's right with you? What's right with you? What do you want to do with your story? What do you want to do with these feelings? And um, kind of developing this sense of um, empowerment as a result. I think that um, if I could give advice to adoptive parents, I think it's really tempting for people to feel territorial or protective or maybe threatened at the thought of an older adoptee speaking into your child's life. But I would encourage you to take every advantage of adoptee mentorship if it's available to you because the way that your child is able to sit in a space where that's built on mutual understanding and shared experience, it's just something that I, as your basic white lady, am not able to provide for him. Um, and even if I were, even if I were like a perfect mother and I said all the right things, it's not coming from a place of personal experience and firsthand perspective. And so it doesn't hold the credibility and the weight that it does when it's coming from an adoptee who can truly understand and identify. So all the books in the world and all the advice and their therapy in the world cannot possibly replace what adoption uh, centered mentorship has provided for my son. So uh, I'm so thankful for both Harper and Laura for sharing. And just to expound a little bit on that, the, the why. So they're absolutely correct that and only adoptees can really truly understand the experience of being adopted. And there's such power in feeling heard and known. After the documentary that features my search for my birth parents came out, I was inundated with adoptees who just needed to chat. And so I did that for a long time. And then I kind of created it into more formal practice where I was um, mentoring, but I just couldn't sustain the need. And so at times I would reach out to another adoptee, adult adoptee and say, hey, could you chat with so-and-so or could you take, um, could you meet with this person and realized that was actually sometimes doing more harm than good, which is why this organization is going to be really focusing energy, effort, time, money on uh, mentor training. So just being an adoptee in and of itself isn't enough to hold this esteemed role as a mentor. Um, I noticed that a lot of the mentors that were mentoring others were triggered by things the mentee would say, which makes great sense. So in the mentor training curriculum, we'll work really hard on the mentor first understanding their own worldview, perspective, and thoughts on their adoption so that then they can be in a place to meet the mentee where they're at. And again, this is all ages, um, not just kids. But uh, that mentor training part is going to be really key. Background checks, um, but bringing in a lot of professionals who are already doing this great work around developmentally appropriate conversations to have with youth. And um, so let me go to this next slide where I'm excited to share kind of some of what this will look like, what we're going to do. This screenshot right now is of a software, a mentorship software program that we want to invest in, which will allow approved mentors to be spotlighted on this website once you get access and you can learn about the mentor, like here's my page, it's not fully filled out, but people would be able to click on view my availabilities and then schedule a mentorship session um, only after the mentors have learned all about ethics. And mentors also will be paid, which is important to reduce harm as well, because with volunteering, there can be things that come up or you may not prioritize. And for 
adoptees who are being mentored, having someone not show up can refuel that abandonment um, issue that we have. And so being paid gives that, um, it, it is a skilled position and there's less likelihood that, that we will inflict harm on the mentee as well. So in addition to this mentor software, the mentor training curriculum, we're also gonna host what I'm currently hosting, which is called the Adoptee Lounge, which are groups. So adult adoptee lounges, youth adoptee lounges. Right now, um, like you heard Harper's mom talk about, Harper and I, I'm kind of training him to be a junior mentor, but Harper is in a group with me and four other Black transracially adopted tween boys all over the country. There is uh, a specific group for Ethiopian adoptees. These lounges will be offered as well as individual mentorship, the one-on-one. -on -one. All of these are virtual. Getting a little bit to the values of the org are adoptee power. And what that means is that adoptees are gonna be centered in all decisions that we're making and will be um, heavily involved on staff, on the board always. And prioritizing that ethical storytelling is really key. It's something that a lot of adoptees learn through the lounges is that they don't have to share their adoption story with everybody in the world. And then we try to work on strategies to figure out how to not share, how to keep that private. Um, healing centered community is so key for the reasons that Mary started with that we know adoptee suicide rate is, is, is really high. And knowing that there is a huge importance for me to make sure that everyone in the organization is maintaining health because of the inevitable triggers. Um, it's also so clear to me that there is a unique bond that happens when adoptees connect with other adoptees. It's inexplainable. Um, and the, the last key value is intersectionality, which is to just talk about how overlapping identities are actually inherently important to the adoptee that whether it's race, age, socioeconomic status, class, ableism, disability, that those things are not going to be treated as tokens or check boxes, but they're actually like woven into the fabric of all of the programming that we offer um, because adoptees, adoptees identities are inherently intersectional. I wanna share another story with you, and this is gonna come from Belinda. Um, a lot of my work focuses on race, transracial adoption, but it's so exciting for me to see the way that some of the mentoring that has been really powerful already has, is not because of a match based on race. Um, Belinda is a white young lady who sent me a direct message on Instagram a couple of years ago and said, I don't think you're gonna see this or you might not even respond to me, but I really need to talk to somebody. She said, my adoptive parents just got pregnant and they're having their first child and I'm really scared that they're gonna love that child more than me because it's their biological child. I don't know who can understand this conundrum, please, if you have time, I'd love to chat. Belinda and I have had a relationship for a uh, few years now, and here is what she wants to share about that, the value to her. Hi, my name is Belinda. I'm 22 years old, and I'm currently in college, and I aged out of foster care when I was 18 and homeless and on my own, but I did get adopted about six months later. Having a mentor is super important to me personally, since therapists do not get it. They really only provide textbook answers because they haven't personally experienced the traumas and emotions that are centered around foster care and adoption because they haven't experienced it. When I began meeting with Angie, I had a therapist, but she didn't get how I felt on a personal level. After I connected with Angie, I realized even if we don't have the exact same experiences or the exact same traumas, we can relate to those same basic emotions that are centered around trauma and foster care. Specifically, when my parents got pregnant, I was 21, and although Angie hadn't personally had that experience of being a 21-year-old, 
about to have her first ever sibling and those fears of abandonment and trauma that arose with that, she understood the core of my emotions because of her experiences with loss, abandonment, and the fears that come with that. Throughout the months that led up to my brother being born, she listened, she related to my feelings the best she could, and she helped me come to terms with a new change that was going to happen. Because of her guidance and friendship in my life, I was able to experience being a sister for the first time without a completely paralyzing fear that I would be abandoned again. Having mentors that were or are part of the system allows us to connect and process feelings that aren't always as warmly accepted by others outside of the community. So that is Belinda. Let me throw it back to Mary um, for a few of our logistics around how we plan to do this. Hi, my name is Belinda. Oh my goodness. I'm just so blown away by Harper, Belinda, and Laura. I just am so grateful for them and their willingness to share. Um, so what does this look like? So I, I'm, I'm, my background is in nonprofits. I've been a nonprofit leader in this space for about 20 years. Um, and so opening and scaling organizations has been a big part of my career. Um, and so I want to be very careful that I, we're not talking jargon here. And so please, if you have questions about this, what this looks like, please, please put it in the chat. We are going to have some time to answer a few questions um, towards the end. But um, how this is showing up right now is we're trying to build essentially a three-year budget um, where the first year we're focusing on um, Sorry, I'm getting distracted by my own words. Um, we're trying to host 50 sessions um, with 100 new members. Um, now, as Angela mentioned, she has already been working and supporting adoptees in this community, um, but uh, but we want to grow this. And so, um, the uh, and, and just so you know, a session has six attendees for youth and 10 attendees for adults. And we also assume that some of them might um, uh, attend multiple sessions. And so uh, this is not necessarily unique um, or unique visitors, I should say. Um, so in the first year, we have a couple big goals. Um, one is just as Angela talked about paying the mentors, um, we wanna pay Angela. <laughs> Um, at this point, she is doing this um, unpaid, um, and we're, as a board, kind of talking through what that tipping point is. Um, but as a nonprofit, our job is to solicit funds to ensure that we can sustain this work. Um, the other thing that this goes towards is to recruit, run background checks, and train the mentors to facilitate these vir virtual groups. Um, to secure the software that Angela talked about, not just um, the video software to host these sessions, but that mentor uh, platform where mentors can post their information and things like that. Um, this all is a cost. Um, to pay the mentors for their time and labor, both emotional and uh, literal, uh, to, that it takes to facilitate these virtual rooms. And over the course of the next couple years, we want to um, obviously grow the number of adoptees that we're working with, um, grow the number of mentors that are serving them, and add the staff support and the capacity to the Adoptee Mentoring Society team and grow the awareness of the work. Uh, Angela alluded to this earlier, we're starting in the United States. Um, but there has been interest across the world for this space. And so we're trying to understand the legal legalities around what that means. How do you expand internationally? So right now, really focusing on, on the US, but with the plan over the next couple of years to start piloting in some other countries as well. Um, so that's you know, you see the numbers, we're trying to raise 150,000 this year, 365,000 in year two, and 500,000 in year three. So we're scaling pretty significantly, but we think this is absolutely achievable. Um, I want to go ahead and stop with the numbers and uh, let's hear one final testimony about the power of this work from Becca, who is an adult adoptee.
Hi, my name is Becca Flatt, and I am a mental health provider and an adult interracial adoptee. I am also someone who has struggled with feeling like I belong, finding community that feels safe for me, and that has been able to mirror back to me all of my intersecting identity. What I've found with adoptee lounges are that I don't need to look further for community connection, care, um, and the mirrors that I've been looking for my entire life. And one of the things that I'm often talking about as a mental health professional is reducing this feeling of isolation that can come with feeling that there's something inherently wrong with you. And that's something that I've experienced, that sense of there's something wrong with me. And I have found that soul balm in the mentoring experiences that I've had through the lounges and one-on-one. I feel less like I don't belong and more like I'm a normal person who, have ha- who has had a lot of abnormal experiences, um, including the fundamental foundational trauma of losing my biological connections. I think there's something supremely gratifying about being able to sit with another adoptee who very much understands what it feels like to not belong and to have mirror back that that's normal and it's okay. I think the Adoptee Mentoring Society has so much potential to develop this really beautiful, deep community that can talk about really hard things when adoptees often aren't allowed to talk about really hard things. And the best part is that we're going to be able to do it together. So I am beyond excited to be a part of this kickoff because there's something so beautiful about the magic that happens in community with other adoptees as an adoptee. So to say that I support mentoring is a understatement and I just am really looking forward to seeing what the Adoptee Mentoring Society does because I think there's so much power here and I just am so excited to be along for the ride. Oh, love Becca. Also, sorry that I didn't mute myself. I live on a busy street so every once in a while you hear a car. Um, I want to uh, pause and and say thank you to Becca and also say that we have some time. I just put this in the chat. If you have questions, please add them. We'll get to as many as we can. And um, there have already been a couple questions. And so, Angela, how about I read them to you and you can answer them. Sounds good. Um, so Maureen asks, great, that there will be an Ethiopian adoptee group. What other international adoptee groups will there be? Hi, Maureen. So glad you're here. Yeah, you know, all of the the groups that I've hosted so far are just by demand. So I I realized that I happen to be mentoring like five or six Ethiopian transracially adopted tween girls. (laughs) So specific. And I thought, I think they would all love to know each other. They're all over the country. So I, I put them all together. And that's also when I was like, oh, building out this society will allow me to meant to train an Ethiopian adoptee to be the mentor lead for that group. Um, so as I said earlier, though, I don't assume that all of the identities that I can see is where people will want to be part of. So the groups are as far and wide as people wish. I'm also hosting um, a group right now that isn't centered around their ethnic identity. It's actually a group of of individuals who really wanted to talk about how to establish boundaries with their adoptive parents around their story. And so we have a specific group for that right now that's just fantastic and wonderful. Um, And so I am really excited for the groups to take whatever shape fits with the need. Um, I was able to pair a transgender, transracial adopted adult with a transgender, transracial uh, youth adoptee together and they share other identities, but just given examples of how unique 
this can be, this is part of where I talked about intersectionality, not being a checkbox. So we're not gonna assume that you are 38 year old um, white adoptee with white parents that you're gonna wanna see another 38 year old white adoptee with white parents. Like some, I've seen some beautiful relationships that cross all the intersections that I would assume they would want. So in this mentorship software, we're able to really break it up. And I'm so excited about, about that. Thank you. Um, Vanessa asks, our daughter is three years old. I don't think it's too early, but do you? If not, how do I get her started? <laughs> Vanessa, hi. Um, I don't think it's too early either. And again, the grand vision, which will include money to fund this. I know someone else asked already if we are uh, 501c3. Yes, we are. Um, we have our EIN number. So I, when you go to our website, there's a donate button and feel free to start using that tonight if you want. <laughs> but really the purpose of tonight is to, to ask about you know, the messaging and does this resonate with you and would you share it? But please know that yes, your donations are tax deductible. We've been working on getting all of that set up. Uh, Vanessa, my, my big dream is that an adoptee doesn't have to wait until they're 12 or 15 till they meet and really genuinely connect with another adoptee in the world. So I have been able to, to, to think about how virtually you could have a one-year-old, you know, a little babe in arms that's an adoptee um, attend a session. And of course their parents would be holding them or, but that, that that would allow this adoptee to get to know other adoptees uh, when they're one, two, three years old. And of course the parents would then make these connections too, but the mentor in this case would be perhaps reading a book together um, on the screen, having story time. So I'm really excited about that. My expertise has focused on um, tweens and up. And so that's what I've been able to provide is 12 and up. I'm really excited to partner with others who are really skilled at those younger ages and can help me train mentors to be able to, to have those appropriate conversations and connect the youth, the young, the babies, the toddlers. Yes, all 7 million adoptees in the world. I want to, to know that they have a genuine relationship with at least one other adoptee in the world. Thank you. Um, so I think what I'm hearing is whenever. <laughs> <laughs> once we get once the, we get the infrastructure <laughs> the infrastructure is i know the need is great and it's immediate right now Do i you, see oh sorry i just see cameron's question and renicia's question yes. about timeline and and those are such great questions that i don't have an answer to right now that that once we secure some funding i can work really hard to build the training curriculum for mentors. Um, I imagine that to take a few months. Um, and so as soon as that starts rolling, then we will be able to train mentors, which that process is not determined yet either. I really want it to be a collaborative uh, process. So not just what I think, um, but a group of adoptees will create this training curriculum, which may take um, I would love for it to, to be like a three day retreat intensive, but again, these are my dreams and, and money is really the thing that we'll need to have, um, to have that all put in place right now on the website, you'll see there's a section where you, you can, um, let us know that you're interested in becoming a mentor. We will write you back and say, great, we've got your name down and we'll connect with you once we've built the training curriculum, which I hope is as soon as possible. Thank you. Um, Joy, I see you. I, I have been a board chair for a nonprofit and I love fundraising. Mm -hmm. And how can we find ways to be support, to help and be supportive of the organization? Um, we'll be in touch. <laughs> but I would say 
start start by sharing share the website share what we're doing share with your community share your why and uh and and help build this um help help build our 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 our, our lists and our the awareness of this and uh and then and we'll go from there yeah, Mary, I don't know if you can see the Q&A box. It's separate. Oh, um, no. Where is this? <laughs> but I can I can read through some of those questions, too. Let me do the time check. 6.11. So maybe we'll take five more minutes because I did not want to take a ton of your time. I love these questions. It tells me that there is a community that wants to rally and support this cause. Um, I see a couple questions about collaborating with other community groups that are doing similar work already. And that I absolutely want to be uh, involved. And in no way do I wanna duplicate efforts that others are already doing. I'm grateful to be connected with a lot of folks already and their models are a little different. So I would love for all of us to work together. Um, I think about Adoptees Connect, there's the Black support group, there's a lot of Instagram and TikTok groups. And so yeah, I am excited to be in connection with many of those folks and to amplify their work on social media and then you know join together if we're able. And regarding some of the questions about uh do we plan on doing virtual events or in-person events to raise money more to come um we're still kind of figuring out what the plan looks like right now we are soliciting like angela said the donate button is on the website so please feel free to do to do that um and then uh here is here's another question and this, this maybe can be our last one is there a mentorship for adoptee folks who are in leadership and or leading groups um i'm not sure i understand but i it does make me think of something i neglected to mention which is that mentors will have ongoing support from a trained adoption competent therapist so if this is the answer to the question that mentors who are leading groups um, in order to do that well will need an outlet i've had many outlets i'm so grateful for in order for me to stay focused on the mentee in sessions um times when the mentee you know i think so many of you know me and know that i grew up in a closed adoption couldn't know my birth parents until about 10 years ago and that was so thrilling for me and so when I work with mentees who have open relationships but may not want to hang out with their birth parents, it can trigger me inside. And so I've learned how to manage that because it's about them and not me. And one way I manage that is to seek therapy support for myself. And that will be embedded into the structure too, that if you are a mentor, you'll be required to attend those sessions. And, and I'm so excited about some therapists who are adoptees and adoption competent who have already wanted to join for that piece. So, you know, re retaining mentors is a huge job as well. Um, so again, it'll take, it'll take a huge community to make this run ethically, um, reducing harm, support, being aware of emotional burnout, all of that is, is stuff that we'll be really radically attuned to the whole time. Yes. Well, I know I first want to thank um, Angela. Like, let's just give mad props right now uh, to the vision, to the work that you've already done, the work that you continue to do. I want to thank Ashley, who has been diligently in the chat when there has been a question about a link or what's happening or this or that. She has been on it. So thank you, Ashley. Um, the website, please check it out. Give us your thoughts. Um, I also know that uh, there will be a survey that we would love for you to fill out. This is this is how you can help us right now is help us with the messaging. Did this resonate? Um, does the website make sense? 
well, who should we be talking to um, in terms of raising this $150,000? And ideally, in my dream world, we'd have multi-year gifts. And so we're, we're building towards year three. Um, all of these things are happening. And of course, if you're interested in being a mentor, sign up on that form. Um, and then let's do this. Y'all are now part of this. We're doing this together. And uh, this is such a tremendous honor. And I am so grateful to be able to be a part of this with you. And uh, I'm excited for the future. Thank you so much. And I, I wanna add one last thing. Jenny asked if this has re been recorded. And yes, I recorded the session. I'll send it out to everybody with a link. So another way you can help is by being a champion and an ambassador for Adoptive Mentoring Society. This uh slide deck will be available to you and this recording so you can share it with folks who might not have been able to come thank you all have a good night there's still time um so if you thought you were going to be here till 6 30 go do the survey right now yay yes <laughs> thank you all and we so look forward to staying connected with you and uh be well take care of yourselves bye